International Baccalaureate. And it's um, the IB is a nonprofit organization. It was founded in Geneva in 1968. And uh, since and it offers uh, different educational programs, it started only with one program, and now it has different programs, which I will um, have a look at in in a few seconds. Um, but it basically offers an, a programs for students ages three to nineteen, and the main focus of the IB programs is to help the students think critically and independently, and also um, try to develop ideas of um, global perspective. In 1970, there were 12 schools in, in the world that were Ivy schools that were part of the International Baccalaureate. And in 2020, we can see that there is a huge growth. There is an exponential growth. We have almost, um, well, we have 5,390 um, schools in the world that are Ivy schools. And these are schools are represented in, the, in 150 different countries around, around the world. So it has seen um, a significant growth in the number of the schools that apply uh, or that have adopted the um, International Baccalaureate Program. Um, something also interesting about the demographics of these schools is that when the Ivy started back in 1968 and in the graph you can see in 1971, uh, it basically started with private schools. There was a handful of private schools that uh, implemented the program and, they, and that wanted to have this sort of education. Now in 2020, we see that it's 52% of the schools in the world are actually state schools, which obviously have also 48% uh, of private schools in the world implementing the program, but uh, uh, state schools have seen an, um, a tremendous um, growth um, in, in schools in, in, in places all over the world that where the governments have decided that you know they want to support this kind of education for for the children so the question for me is you know why has this happened why has there been this kind of um, exponential growth why from 12 schools we go to over 5,000, why from only being a handful of private schools, you know, even um, this type of education interests um, um, governments and, and state schools as well. And I think the answer comes from, from these, uh, from the Ivy mission statement and, and everything else that we will um, talk to you about within this presentation. But basically, uh, maybe you should start with what the Ivy is not, uh, or who is it not necessarily for. You might have heard that um, it's an education for people who want to travel the world. Okay, well, you can't travel the world, obviously, if you have an Ivy education, if you have an international education, because the, the sort of um, education that the Ivy gives you um, is very consistent and supports this sort of lifestyle. But it really what it is, is that the Ivy is focused on intercultural understanding and respect. So understanding other cultures, understanding how those people think, understanding that, um, like the Ivy's mission statement says, that people um, with their difference can, all, all the people with their difference can also be right. So it's about understanding um, others. And this is an essential asset in a globalized world. Even if you're not planning on moving uh, uh, to live abroad, or if you're not planning to you know, travel the world uh, or work in different countries, even if you're planning on staying where you live in your country of origin, um, it's still this sort of program is um, interesting because it develops these values that are so essential in a globalized world. Um, it's also not for those who oh, at least, well, who want to learn languages. And let me uh, clarify what I mean. I don't mean that you don't learn languages with the IB, but it, uh, learning a language is not the main aim of, a, of um, an IB education. It's, it's so much more. Um, students who uh, take part in one of the IB programs have to learn a second language. And in some cases, they even have to uh, learn a third language. So it does help you become fluent and multilingual in different languages. But Again, it's uh, even if you're not a, a person who is wanting to become an international traveler and wants to speak the languages, you know, being able to uh, be multilingual would be um, a tremendous asset. Um, again, in this part of the, of, of in the in this kind of world that that we live in. Um, so, what are some of the highlights of the uh, that you can, we can see? I think that um, important. An important thing within the um, mission statement is the idea that uh, the individuals are going to be knowledgeable. That is, that it's 
backed up by the IBR rigorous academic programs um, who are going to make, make uh, knowledgeable individuals. And then the other asset um, that you can see from the IB mission statement is the idea of being compassionate, of being caring, um, that you can understand other people and make the, um, the world a better place. So I think that part of um, being compassionate and creating not only concentrating on what you know, um, but also on being a better person, it's something that the IB um, values and, and it's part of their, their mission statement. So I think that's distinctive perhaps from other um, education systems which might place more emphasis on, on, other, um, on other aspects. Um, at the heart of the, I, of the IB, of the, an international education, is the IB Learner Profile. And the IB Learner Profile, what it is, is a set of 10 attributes, which you can see um, projected. And it's at the heart of all of the programs. And the essence um, of an IB program is to develop uh, lifelong learners. So uh, the attributes do not only apply to the students, but apply to everybody within the learning community. That means it applies to the students, it applies to the teachers, it applies um, to the parents, it applies to you know, the principal of the school. It's, um, it's a, a set of attributes that we are, uh, everybody needs to be developing through their life. Um, as we you know, while we're educating and then once we're you know, higher education or in our uh, professional life um, later on. So what the IB does is by making this at the heart of every program, it nurtures the development of these, um, of these attributes. So it's a holistic approach to education. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, we're not just um, going to concentrate on being knowledgeable, which is very important and wh that's why it's there, but we're also going to be looking at the other aspects of the student, of the learner. We're going to become um, caring, reflective. We're going to be principled. We're going to communicate effectively. We're going to be open-minded and consider other perspectives and other ideas. Um, it's also about being balanced and you know, be doing exercise as well as uh, learning as well as um, uh, helping other people as well as uh, doing the academic part. So learning to keep a balance and order in, in your life as well. Um, taking care of yourself, taking care of others. So it encourages the, 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 the development of these attributes in all the members of the, of the community. And I think having these as the backbone of the programs gives the, gives the programs um, as, uh, an identity, and a special identity. And it guides a lot of the activities and a lot of the things that are done and all of the um, methodologies or the um, sort of activities that happen in, a, in the day to day in, in a school. Um, as I was mentioning before, um, the IB has uh, four different programs. So it has different kinds of uh, programs depending on the age of the students. So um, sometimes people uh, mistake uh, international baccalaureate, I guess, because it says baccalaureate in, in the name of the organization as being a program which is for the uh, high school level, for the baccalaureate level. But the, inter the IB, it's, it's a, um, the name of the organization, International Baccalaureate, and it has programs, as you can see here, from the, for all the different ages. So the uh, students from um, the age of three to 12 uh, take part of the primary years program. Um, students in, uh, from 11 to 16 take pa part in the middle years program. And uh, students 16 to 18 take part of the um, IB diploma program. The IB has a fourth program, which is about the same, well, it's the same, not about, it's the same age as uh, for those students in the diploma program. It's called IB career related program. It's more of a vocational program. It implements some of the elements of the diploma program, but it's more of a vocational kind of a studies. Um, generally, the program that students um, attend, if they want to carry on with uh, studies in university, is um, the IBA diploma program. Uh, so within this, uh, at, at SEC Dublin, for example, we um, have students from um, ages 11 through 18. That means we have both the middle years program and the diploma program. So I'm just going to pass it on to um, Garrett, the academic coordinator, so he can describe a bit more in detail, um, in particular, the, the core of the four programs, but in particular, a bit more of the middle years program and the diploma program. 
Hi, everyone. Um, as Monica said, the IB offers a real coherent and holistic model for growth and development. The whole child is really focused on at the center of every IB program, whether that be from three years of age to 18 years of age, the child is at the center. It's an incredibly balanced and holistic model for education. And a child's intellectual growth is matched by their emotional and social development as they move through the program. Now you might ask, how is this done? Well, it's done through the way classes are taught. Knowledge and content in the IB is married to real world situations. So those real world situations give a panoramic view that is both historical as well as geopolitical. The child has a real sense as they move through the program, a real sense of the world around them, its history, its scope, its nuances and contradictions, but also a sense of who they are, their place in the world. And you could say they become more internationally minded. And by rooting learning in real world situations, students are asked to problem solve, to apply knowledge that they have learned in class to new and unfamiliar situations, just as they have to do when they go into the world of work or when they go into further study. Students are asked to make links between seemingly different or disparate areas of knowledge and different subjects. In history, they may be asked to use knowledge gains in maths, maybe when looking at demographics. In art, they might use what they have learned in geography to help them understand a particular conceptual or cultural viewpoint in a work of art. So as well as being highly knowledgeable, the students are asked to put that knowledge to the test, to be creative, to take risks, and to question the status quo. And at the heart of the IB is learning to question. That's the, the heartbeat of the IB, is the students learning to question. Learning to think critically, to analyze, to evaluate, to reflect on everything. And the students that are produced are often highly critical and highly reflective. At the same time though, there's a great pragmatism to the IB so that the learning um, can be, is often project-based and problem-based. Beginning often with a fundamental question that drives every action and frames every, every aspect of the classroom. And this itself opens up further questions and further avenues and gives the students a real multiple multifaceted view of the world. So for example, if you imagine in a science lesson that a unit of work might have the question, is cheap, sustainable food possible? And through that one question, they would explore the chemistry of carbohydrates, the structure of proteins, the use and management of soil and land, the impact on fish stocks, the economics that drive supply and demand, ethical and philosophical questions about animal welfare, hunger, and commonwealth of ownership. A unit of work in science then will touch on chemistry, biology, natural and human geography, mathematics, economics, politics, philosophy. That's no small journey from such a fundamental first question. And the result of all of this takes us back to the learner profile. The students that we help, or the program rather, helps produce are knowledgeable, inquiring, caring, and courageous individuals. If we move to the, uh, the next slide. Now, this slide looks at the IB diploma. The IB diploma is the equivalent of the Irish Leaver Certificate, the British A-level, or Bachelorato in Spain. It's the gold standard. It really is the gold standard of the program. And it gives access to some of the very best universities around the world. Principally, a student studies six subjects, including two languages, science, maths, arts, and the humanities. So you have a very balanced program. At the center of that program is the core. You have a subject called theory of knowledge, a subject called creativity activity service, and the extended essay. And the core really shows the high quality watermark of this program, its ambition 
and its just essential robustness. Theory of Knowledge is a program, is a uh, subject rather, which looks at the very nature of what is knowledge. You'd call it in philosophy, epistemology. And it really asks the students to become truly deep, critical thinkers, which is excellent preparation for further study. The extended essay also is an ambitious, extensive, independent research essay of some 40 hours of work spread over two years with a supervisor, which provides rigorous, thorough preparation for university. And an opportunity as well for the student to direct their own learning in some measure, for the student to have an interest, whether it be in sports, whether it be in science or in the arts, and to drive a, an inquiry question, and to research deeply about a subject and to write a comprehensive research paper on that subject. And you also have Creativity Activity Service, which de helps develop the non-academic aspects of the program. Students will identify a need in themselves or in the community at large, and they will establish a program or an activity or something, some form of action to address that need. And in doing so, they learn many practical skills, self-management, time management, project management, um, they become resilient, they gain a perspective because the project also has to have a global element. But it helps them become very active agents in their own life and in their community, and very principled agents at two, because they're addressing a need that they identify. Um, if we move on to the next slide. As I said earlier, the program gives access to some of the very, very best universities in Ireland and around the world. Um, the Russell Group universities in the UK, including Oxbridge, state and Ivy League institutions in the US, Trinity and Queens, closer to home. Uh, it's a program that does have true global recognition, but also respect as well, alongside the many, the many good national programs. The IB has, um, as well as recognition, um, respect for the quality and, and the caliber of students that it produces. Um, testimony to that is common reportage that many students when first going to university who come from an IB background flourish and find those first initial years when you have to do everything for yourself, they take that in their stride. And on the next slide, we can see some of the recent institutions that SEK students have gone to in the UK, in the US, and across mainland Europe. And finally, you may be wondering about SEK Dublin, where our school has been here for some 40 years. SEK as a whole is over a century old in education. Our school is, we're very proud of our school, 40 years here in Greystones Island. We are within 40 minutes reach of central Dublin. We are the first and only IB school to offer the middle years and diploma program. So we cater for children from 11 to 18 years of age. We're also a very intimate school. By design, we have smaller class sizes. We have excellent um, staff, of course, and excellent facilities. We are a truly sound and excellent school. And running through our school at the core is the philosophy of the IB. All right? Maybe you have some questions. Um, anybody who has questions can also um, put them via the chat. Um, I, I forgot to mention that earlier on, but um, I would just like to say that um, th thanks very much, Monica and um, Gareth, for that very informative and presentation. Um, I had the privilege of visiting the, um, the Dublin International School. I was invited there by Pedro and by Fidelma a good few years ago. Um, and it's a beautiful setting and um, very, very, very well organised. Uh, um, I seem to remember you say that the the um, the students that are, that are there they're, they're placed with um, with families, aren't they? Um, I, I believe um, in in and around um, in and around Dublin, and you you go to great lengths to um, to make sure you know, to to, um, to make sure that they are they are collected from. I think you lay on coaches that they are collected from the um, from from their homes and taken to them from um, the, the school. So it's, it's very it's, it's a very safe environment. I, I found. Yeah, we welcome students from all over the world, from, from continents, far-flung continents. 
mm-hmm. and some of those students stay with host families. Um, when you stay with a host family, we look to make a very good match there with a child, the same sex, the same age, um, with similar interests in the family, so on and so forth. Maybe there's certain dietary or faith requirements. Mm-hmm. Some of our students are, of course, day students. So they live with their parents uh, in Dublin. They might be local families, might be families who've moved to Dublin to work for various international corporations or, or embassies indeed. Um, and we also on site are, have constructed very recently a boys residence that you can see in the left hand corner uh, or middle corner. And we are constructing from next year a girls residence. So in terms of day and boarding facilities, we have the full, um, the full mix there of host families, which some students like because of the immediacy of having a uh, home from home, traditional boarding facilities. And of course, we have our day students. So a type of educate, um, domestic trinity, you could say. Yes, a question is coming from, um, you, you might just have touched upon what, what um, Maria Luisa has just asked in there, but she, she wanted to know a little about the profile of the students in the, um, in the, in the school. Um, maybe you could just elaborate a little bit on, on, on that. Yeah, well, obviously, we are a Spanish organization of over a century old, like over 125 years old. So a lot of our students come from Spain and the Iberian Peninsula. Um, But we also have students who are based here in Ireland, students from the subcontinent, from India, students from Korea, students from other parts of mainland Europe, um, students from the Middle East, um, students from Africa as well. Um, So a real broad scope of, of different nationalities. And that's mirrored in our staffing as well. Our staffing come from different continents, the Americas, North and South, the UK, Western Europe, um, Central Europe, and so on. And um, are they, the students that, are, that have come from abroad, are they usually here for maybe just a year or, or two years? Um, or, or are they here for, for longer? Good question. Some come for just a year. Some come for even less time, maybe a term or, or half a year, and their interest is to immerse themselves in um, what is now Europe's only English-speaking country. Yes. Um, that's always a very attractive prospect to come to one of the safest countries as well, and to do that one. Um, also, we have students who stay for their entire school careers. Um, they, we, our longest student has been with us for some five or six years now. Of course, those students who do the diploma program who might just come for the diploma stay for two years. Um, we have plenty of families who look to join us in NYP1, our youngest um, year group, which is 11 years of age, and they plan to stay with us until the child is 18. So we really do take them at those formative years and it's take our, them through uh, to when they're young adults. Sure. And I would imagine the, um, the families that, are, that are, are moving around from country to country, um, I, I mean, this... Um, this curriculum is, is, is available in, in many countries, so they can always um, pick up from where they left off in, a, in, a, in another country. Yeah, it's true global reach. And um, with that breadth, though, you also have true quality control. It's very rigorous to be um, recognized as an IB school. There is a very high expectation of what needs to be met. Not this similar to maybe the, the Olympic Committee. Um, so whenever, if you are a family, maybe in, because of business or, or, or some of our families work in diplomacy, have you move around with different stations. One of the things with IB schools you can guarantee is a minimum threshold of quality, and a very high one at that as well. Um, yeah. Um, I, yeah have a I think if I, if I may add to what um, Gareth was just saying, I think just if, if you are a family that are um, moving around the world because of, of work or business, um, the transition f- uh, from an Ivy school to a, to a different Ivy school, it's the, the one that would be the easiest. Um, I think for a student that has to move from an Irish educational system to, I don't know, an French or um, Italian or German education system might experience high difficulty in doing so. However, this transition uh, from an Ivy school to another Ivy school in the world, um, in particular for the middle use program, would be extremely smooth. Um, the, the children would be... Um, 
you know, it would be maintaining the same sort of um, education approach, content and everything, um, because the IB ensures that there is some coherence or there is a lot of coherence um, among IB schools in the world. So in particular for the middle use program, as well with the diploma program, but um, the, 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 the um, target offering the diploma program may vary a bit from, from school to school, so that needs to be looked at. But again, the methodology and, and the way of working and the, the core values are, are the same. So um, it's a really easy transition. Um, and I have a, a question of my own, actually, that um, occurs to me. It, it's probably a little bit technical, but um, in the, the, the diploma program, the um, do, do you have exams? I mean, uh, um, how, it, do you give grades, or, or do you give um, any um, any um, uh, what's what's the word now? Uh, grades and um, and ongoing assessment. Um, I mean, how does that translate, for example, in the case of Ireland, where you have to get C, um, for the CAO, you have to get a number of points. Um, I mean, how does the IB, the International Baccalaureate? Um, tie in with um, the CAO or maybe the, the three grades that uh, British universities ask for? Well, usually, because of its widespread recognition, um, there's usually there's not a um, translation from the grade. So you might find in some countries where it's not well known, um, they would do an equivalency. So it's worth, the IB is graded out of 45 points mm -hmm. in total. And um, against the state system, you might find that a university would say um, X amount of points is equivalent to Y in our system. Um, what you do find, though, in, in most major uh, countries around the world with educational systems, major recognized educational systems, is that there's not that need for that translation. It's recognized in its own right. So in the UK, for example, they don't say, well, you need three A's. Uh, to being a star to go to Oxford or, or, or wherever, Manchester. Um, and the, that would be, the IB would be equivalent to that. You just do a direct, um, um, you would ask for direct points, you know, 30, 34 points, and then maybe ask for some certain subjects studied at certain levels because of the, the choice that's given at the, at the IB in comparison to the British A level. So the recognition is done directly. The IB work extensively with national governments and their educational ministries and departments to get recognition um, um, alongside and equivalent to national programs and, and national qualifications. And each global region has a team from the IB that work directly with uh, regional governments doing that thing. Um, but the IB itself, the diploma is graded, is uh, assessed in, in both those ways. There's an element of continuous assessment um, well, not so much continuous, as in you, for example, the extended essays is worked on over 40, over 40 hours over two, um, over two years. Um, theory of knowledge will have a presentation. Um, some of the subjects will have group projects work to do with science, for example, and some independent investigative studies in the sciences and in the mathematics. There'll be some oral assessments done in the languages. In the arts, for example, there'll be a portfolio that is developed. So there's an element of coursework, you could say, that is assessed by the teacher and moderated at the very end of the course by the IB um, or standardized. And at the end, but principally at the end of two years, you have examinations in all of your subjects. Um, so it's two years study, an element of coursework that runs throughout the two years study, comprising of very various modes from orals to portfolios to investigative studies, essays, and so on, and presentations. And there's examinations at the end as well. I mean, uh, yes, as you were talking, um, I mean, the uh, essays and um, sort of projects and um, portfolios is, is really very good preparation for what's to come in, in, at, at university level, because um, you're often left to your own devices to go away and, and, and do your own research. So that's a, that's a very interesting point. Um, Okay, I'm just looking down down the chat here. I don't see any more questions um, coming through. So, um, uh, what I would like to, uh, Monica, Gareth, I mean, if, if if there are any of the, um, the attendees that are interested in in getting a copy of the presentation, will you be able to? Um, um, do, do you have a, um, an email or a or, or a website that which they could they could contact or or they could do it through us? Well, yeah, you can find us very easily. Um, 
either by you, but we, we, if you simply Google SEC, S-E-K Dublin, you can find our website. Um, mm -hmm. um, or if you Google International Schools Ireland, you will find us there as well. Um, so we're easily found and um, yeah. Yeah, but we will. We can certainly um, send you the the, the uh, PowerPoint so that you can make it available to the members or persons who might be interested. And uh, we, you have our email addresses, so um, please feel free to share it with anybody that might want to Definitely. have more information. That's great. I, I just, want, just wanted to be sure that anybody who is interested in finding out more um, will be able to go either through us or through your website and all your contacts are, are there and, and easily um, obtainable. Um, yes, they are. Yes. Yeah, yes. Great. Lovely. Well, um, well, in that case, um, I think um, we can bring the presentation to a close. And um, I'd just like to thank Gareth and Monica for, um, for, for coming along today and, um, and presenting to us a very, uh, very informative um, subject. And of course, um, we will um, we'll be looking to put um, together more webinars in the future. And we, absolutely no problem if we want to revisit or, um, or elaborate on any um, presentations with any members that, um, that have already presented. So um, with that, thank you very much to all of you and um, enjoy the summer. Uh, if you can get away or if, you, if you're uh, brave enough to get away, I don't know. Staycations. <laughs> um, Indeed, and um, and hopefully when all this is, is over, we can actually meet up in person and um, and have a good chat um, face to face. Thank you. Great, okay. thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank Take you care. very much. You are very welcome. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. bye, -bye.